The limit laws allow us to determine limits of functions that are combinations of simpler functions whose limits we already know. You can think of these as distributive laws, and we'll see why in a moment. The most important thing to keep in mind through this entire video is that we need to assume that the limits of the functions f and g both exist at the point a. None of the laws are true without these assumptions. We'll see an example of why that's the case later. The first two laws deal with addition and subtraction. Law 1 says that the limit of the sum of f and g is the sum of the individual limits. Notice that a is the same for all three limits in this expression. This law says that you can distribute the limit to each term in the sum. In other words, the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. Similarly, law 2 says that the limit of the difference of f and g is the difference of the limits. It's the same thing as law 1, only now we're subtracting g. For example, if we want to find the limit of x squared plus e to the x as x approaches 3, then we can look at the limit of each part separately. This becomes 9 plus e cubed. The 9 is the limit of x squared, and the e cubed is just the limit of e to the x. A special case of these two laws occurs when one of the functions, let's say f, is a constant. So if we let f of x equal c, then the laws become these two statements. Something similar happens when g is constant. Let's justify law 1a graphically. The points near a are mapped to points near l, which is the intuitive idea behind saying that the limit of f at a is l. But now let's slide the function up by c. Those same points around a are now mapped to points on the y-axis that are also shifted up by c. So the new limit is l plus c. You might be wondering why we need to assume that the limits of f and g exist. Let's look at an example that shows us why. If f of x and g of x are both 1 over x, then the limit of f of x minus g of x at 0 is the limit of 1 over x minus 1 over x, which is always 0 as long as x isn't 0. So the limit of f minus g is 0 everywhere. But neither the limit of f nor the limit of g exists at 0, so it doesn't make any sense to write this, since both terms are undefined. In short, sometimes you can combine two functions with no limit at a into a function that does have a limit at a. This is why you need to be careful when using the limit laws. Don't be tempted to split two functions into separate limits and then say that the limit of something like f minus g doesn't exist because the individual limits don't exist. The limit laws don't let you do this. There are also limit laws for the other basic arithmetic operations. Law 3 says that the limit of a product is the product of the limits, and Law 4 says that as long as the limit of g isn't 0, the limit of a ratio is the ratio of the limits. Once again, we have special cases when one of the functions is constant. So if we let f of x equal c, then laws 3 and 4 become these statements. There are two other common ways of combining functions. One is function composition, which is discussed with continuity, and the other is exponentiation, for which we have this law. If the limit of f is positive, then the limit of f of x raised to the g of x is the limit of f of x raised to the power of the limit of g of x. A question, what can happen if the limit of f isn't positive? There are two related cases which aren't really special cases of law 5 since we're changing the assumptions, but they both deal with exponentiation. We're assuming that n is a positive integer. Law 5a says that we can distribute a limit inside an exponent of n. Law 5b says that if n is odd or the limit of f is positive, then we can do the same thing with an nth root. The good news about the limit laws is that they tell us that we can often do what we'd probably be tempted to do even if we'd never heard of them. But we can't be careless. First, the limit of each function involved must exist before you can apply a limit law. Second, you can't divide by zero. And third, you need to be careful with exponentiation.